Hello and welcome to Sick Notes. My name is Dr. Ed Hope, a junior doctor in the UK, and I'm joined by Dr. Ali. Hi, my name's Ali. Uh, I've just started work as a junior doctor in the UK as well. And today we're going to be filming us playing the game Operation. How many operations have you done now on your own? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely none. Yeah, same, none for me. So we're going to be experts at this, obviously. Obviously. Do you want to go first? Then? Right, sure. Spare ribs. Sam has some spare <laughs> ribs to spare. Take out a couple, but use care. And it, that gives me a hundred monies. hundred monies, mate. hundred monies. This is the cash we're after. Oh, look at oh, that. Sick. Cold All right. cash. Sick notes. Okay. We haven't practiced this, by the way, so this is going to be... Uh, How hard can it be? Boom. Smashed, Smashed it. it. Smashed that rib. There's a common misconception that men have more ribs than women. Have you heard about this? Have I? No, I don't think so. It comes from the Bible, thinking that sort of Eve was created it's from, from Adam's rib. Exactly. Yeah. There is some circumstances where people can have not spare ribs, but hmm. extra ribs, okay. can't they? This kind of cervical ribs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's your turn. Oh, it's worth 250. To <laughs> relieve the flutter in Sam's tummy and make yourself a heap of money. Oh, do they all rhyme? Maybe. Have you heard of having butterflies in your tummy? I've heard of having butterflies in your tummy, but so, what, does it, what does it mean? So it means it's the sympathetic system. So you know when we get our fight or flight response, yeah. or we get very nervous, or we're about to do some physical mm. exertion, we get, you know, our heart beats quicker, we breathe quicker, our blood gets diverted from our sort of digestive organs to our muscles, yeah. ready for action. And that gives us the sensation of these butterflies in oh, the tummy that wow. when we get nervous, the good thing about the butterfly here is that it's got a tiny little head. I'm going to try and extract it with... Ah! Uh, oh, Jesus. He's dropped it. This is a, a tricky butterfly. I was being really cocky because it's got this head. To... Yeah. Oh! Nicely done. 250 Why was that smackers! So, next we have bread basket. Oh no, Sam's basket is full. Remove a slice for a fee, that's very nice. What on earth is a bread basket? I've literally never well, heard of this. Well, the, the thing is, the bread basket here, yeah. they put it... In his groin area. By his genitals. Yeah, why have they done that? <laughs> but the bread basket traditionally means your stomach. I think this is one of the hardest ones from my uh, many years as a kid playing this game. Private genital operation. Oh, hello, okay, that's not gonna work. Oh god, how do you get hold of it? Oh! Oh! That counts! I'll save his bread. Mate, his, you... Groin. I'm gonna give you some of the, the, five, the big ones five, here, five, mate. I wonder it, this is incredible. <laughs> UK tax system's gonna come and see, oh, mate. Oh gosh, 40% tax bracket. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well take... <laughs> Ankle bone connected to the knee bone. Fit the band round the pegs. Ah! So actually, I have to fit it round rather than take it out. I'm guessing it's supposed to be some kind of like ligament or tendon. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'd expect this to be like a hamstring. Yeah. Obviously, that would be the back of the thigh. So maybe it's... Or it could be some kind of orthopedic implant. <laughs> that you connect the uh, femur to the tibia or something like that. I'm going to have to get into the old, uh, what I'm going to call, Death Star Trench here to make the... Uh... Why are you not a surgeon? This reminds me when I first had to suture a patient's arm. He started cheering me on because he could tell how shaky I was. I need the same kind of motivation. Well, I've never sutured someone's arm in real life. Oh! Oh no. He's dead. He's gone. He's dead. That's how you can tell a patient's dead when their nose goes red. Their nose goes red. <laughs> Some patients just don't survive. Don't survive the old elastic band. So, here we have the wishbone. Plug the bone from Sam's chest. It may look easy, but it's a test. So where's okay. the wishbone? Over there. Here, yeah. So is that supposed to represent like the hyoid or...? The wishbone is just something that birds and dinosaurs have. Okay. Um, it's basically the fusion of the clavicles. What you were saying about the hyoid is exactly right. So the hyoid bone in the neck obviously looks very much like this wishbone. It's not trying to put you off. Yeah. But when people get strangled, this is the bone that's often broken as well. So is that what they look for in autopsies to see if someone's been strangled? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> oh my god. I think I think it was flashed red.
Mate. Smashed it. That should be a surgeon. What specialty you go? Exactly. Yeah. Sign him up. It's getting embarrassing. Broken heart. Repair Sam's heart and charge your fee. He will thank you most wholeheartedly. I've seen what they've done there. Right, okay. This is, this is definitely an American game. What's this, that? We wouldn't charge Sam for repairing his heart. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had a broken heart? I think I have. I feel like I didn't get the, the, the chest pain to the extent that apparently it's, it's been described in the, in, in the literature. <laughs> what about you? I think we all have. I think it's part of... Part of... Oh! This has given me a break in, broken heart, mm. mate. Obviously, heart failure is a thing we see a lot of on the medical wards. Mm. That's pretty much all I saw on my four-month cardiology placement. Just loads of fluid overload. People with fluid building up in the legs and in the lungs. And the idea is that you give these drugs called diuretics to help them pee out all the fluid. Well, not all the fluid, but most of it. And hopefully, Dr. Hope will be able to repair the broken heart by oh, removing mate. it. Not hopefully, definitely. Fingers crossed. Oh, it worked. You asked, <laughs> your broken heart, mate, is fixed. All right, so we've got wrench to ankle. Take out the ankle wrench with a twist and tighten the money in your fist. <laughs> They're really all about this whole money and being a surgeon thing, aren't they? <laughs> That's true. I'm guessing this is our private practice after be. we've done years yeah. of successful work in the NHS. What's this getting at? A wrenched ankle. Yeah. I think that's what they just call a sprain. Oh. So lots of ligaments in the ankle. Um, oh, there was a bit of a flashy red there. Yeah, so when people fall over on their ankle and they haven't done any bony injury, so any fracture, we can get sort of injuries to the ligament. So a ligament is something that create, connects two bones together as opposed to a tendon which connects a muscle to a bone. Oh, look at that. Nice and easy. And that is how you repair a wrenched ankle. You take the spanner out. <laughs> Writer's cramp. Remove the pencil, leave no doubt. Be sure the lead is also out. You can count on me. I do butterflies, hearts, and now pencils. I'm pretty sure pencils don't have lead anymore, do they? Because like back in the day, pencils used to have lead in them. Actually. And then they realized that lead is not legit for you. <laughs> But I actually thought writer's cramp, I thought that was like a joke, as in that's when you can't think properly, like writer's block. Oh, I thought writer's cramp was, you know, when you yeah. were writing an essay for too long. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. It's kind of like a repetitive, similar to a repetitive strain injury off yeah. when you've got fine motor skills. But, Smart yay! Up. Right, what's next? So we've got Adam's apple. Remove Sam's Adam's apple, including the core, and you'll end up with money galore. Hmm. Can't say fairer than that. So, Adam's apple. That's the uh, laryngeal prominence, as we used to call it in first year. The front of the larynx, the voice box, has, is protected by this piece of cartilage. And on the front of that, we have this laryngeal prominence, as Ali said, that's often called the Adam's apple. It's actually just more pronounced in men, so both men and women do sort of have some kind of um, bit of cartilage there. Nice, mate. <laughs> nice and easy. Oh, apple. Removed. Not sponsored. <laughs> oh, yeah. Has he got a bite out of it as well? Uh, no, but oh, right. we'll okay. sort that for next time <laughs> if they do decide to sponsor us. Charlie Horse, take out the horse to fix the trouble at its source. Okay, so what is a Charlie's Horse? Oh, I've, my never, word, mate. I've I never heard of it. Yeah, so basically it's a cramp in your lower calf, so it's kind of in the wrong place. They've got it in the thigh here, but it should be in the calf. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so generally... Oh! oh! Can't multitask, can you, mate? <laughs> but yeah, so the, the Charlie horse, have you seen the videos? Mate, YouTube it, we'll put a little clip, but mm. it looks mad, you get these mad cramps. So normally we don't know the cause, but it can be caused by vascular problems or yep. electrolyte disturbances as well. All right, brain freeze. Remove the ice cream from Sam's head and he'll soon be out of bed. So brain freeze, what causes that? So the posh name for it, the medical name, is a sphenopalatine this is on the outtakes. You're waiting for this, aren't you? Oh, I'm dying waiting to know. Yeah, yeah. The sphenopalatine ganglioneuralgia. Okay. There's a couple of theories. So it's the blood vessels constricting and dilating very quickly when we have something cold on our palate. So that's the sort of top part of our mouth. That sends these nerve impulses down a nerve called the trigeminal nerve, which is the main sensory nerve to the face. And the, it's a type of referred pain. So although we're sensing the problem in the, in the palate, in the roof of the mouth, 
our body thinks it's coming from the head, so it gives us these, this headache. That's one theory. The other theory is that it's part of the anterior cerebral artery, so an artery that supplies the front of the brain, and the idea is that we end up cooling that when we have something cold in our mouth, and that triggers nerves around the outside of the brain called the meninges, which refers the headache there. But either way, people agree that it's kind of a vascular problem, so something to do with the blood vessels that then is sensed by the nerves. That's the posh way of saying when you eat ice cream, you get a funny headache. <sighs> That's a hard one though. First failure. We'll have to go back. Doctor. Remove Sam's funny bone, then take his riches. When it's gone, he'll be in stitches. So okay. the funny bone. So mm. I've heard that pe people call the humerus, which is this <laughs> bone of your arm, the funny bone. Yeah. But then when you hit your funny bone, that's actually banging your ulnar nerve, which is causing that pain or that odd sort of sensation in this, this bit of your hand. So the ulnar nerve supplies sensation to sort of your, in, your pinky finger and half of your ring finger. So if you if you do hit your funny bone on something, then a lot of the time the pins and needles are going to be in that distribution. So it's kind of cool that you have such a sort of defined area of sensation, and that was one of the things we used to get tested on in uh, in anatomy. Have you managed it yet? Yeah, and I put it back in because you know I was doing so well. Mm, okay. <laughs> Got it. Locked on. Hey. <laughs> The water on the knee. Remove the water from Sam's knee before it floats away your feet. <laughs> okay. So, bad. so is this is this talking about like a baker's cyst or something or, or what? Oh, I just thought what an effusion. But yeah, it could yeah. be baker's cyst, couldn't it? Mm. So some kind of effusion on the knee. We're removing the pail of water. Oh. So water on the knee, as we say, we get an injury, so we get swelling from some inflammation. We often see all the swelling underneath the kneecaps, so the knee becomes very large. So an effusion is a term we just mean for fluid kind of in the wrong place. Oh! oh no. The nose lights up, the oh. doctor is upset. Let's have a look. Okay, we have to bear in mind that we're losing 40% on income tax. Okay. Um, so <laughs> let's take that into account. 9% uh, for me, I, I lose because of my student loan repayment, which you don't have, so that's fine. <laughs> A thousand, mate. Thousand four hundred. Ah, oh. well played. Well played. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little bit of something. <laughs> Maybe that is pushing it a little bit. Thank you, Doctor Ali, mate. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me on your on your channel. It's been cool. a, an absolute honour. Yeah, and you guys, if you have enjoyed this, then check out Doctor Ali's channel. He does a bunch of other um, interesting medical things, particularly medical education stuff. And we've done a few videos together today, so you might enjoy it watching them. So until next time, guys, see you soon.